many of you have been getting in touch this morning as we told you that 5,000 scientists and doctors uh, are meeting in Amsterdam to talk about a subject that doesn't get much attention, but you're certainly giving it yours, chronic pain. Earlier in the programme, the broadcaster and journalist Kirsty Young joined me to talk about how her experiences have shaped her life. She talked of being hollowed out by pain, uh, suffering from uh, fibromyalgia and also rheumatoid arthritis, which forced her to, to leave her beloved job on Desert Island X here on Radio 4. But she's called on the NHS to take people with chronic pain more seriously. I mean, goodness knows Wes Streeting doesn't need yet another thing on his desk to deal with. But I would say that it would be to the advantage of the health service, the overstretched health service, to take people with chronic long-term pain seriously and not just palm them off with either, you know, a great big pack of painkillers or some heavy antidepressants. A lot of you have been writing in. Uh, there's a voice note here we wanted to share from Jamie. It's great to hear Kirsty's voice again and also to hear her experience. Yeah, it totally resonates with me. I've been in chronic pain for uh, over 20 years. The NHS stopped having a gold standard pain management service over a decade ago. Um, and that's the issue. Dr Chris Parker, Clinical Director of an NHS Community Pain Service in Ainsdale, Brook Merseyside is here and so is Dr Camilla Hawthorne, Chair of the Royal College of GPs and a GP in South Wales. Warm welcome to you both. Good morning. Uh, Camilla, if I could come to you first of all uh, as a GP, the first people we see uh, when we start to feel unwell or something's going wrong. Uh, Kirsty talks about being scoffed at, so it was actually by a female doctor, so it's not necessarily about the, the sexism uh, from a man to a woman, but it was there she felt in some ways and not being believed. What, what do you have to do to be taken seriously? Well, good morning, first of all. Um, it's, it's always hard listening to um, people talking about those type of experiences. And of course, it shouldn't happen. Um, the important thing as GPs is that we are taught to look at people holistically so that we look at their physical, their psychological, their social inputs um, and listen and listen to what they have to say and try to understand what's happening to them. So I'm sorry that she was scoffed at. I'm very sorry. Um, but having said that, uh, we see an awful lot of chronic pain. There are so many patients I see um, with fibromyalgia, but also other forms mm -hmm. of chronic pain as well. Um, and the um, what we have in the cupboard is relatively limited, um, certainly in primary care. Um, and it shouldn't be just a reflex action of um, adding in stronger and stronger painkillers. Well, I'm just minded of the front page of, of The Guardian this morning, millions worldwide at risk of opioid addiction. Yes. It, it, uh, do we have in the NHS at the moment pathways, and I will come to Chris in just a moment, but from your seat as a GP to, to help people in different ways, because also others have complained that antidepressants are just put in front of you as well. Yes. So low-dose antidepressants are sometimes used to help with neuropathic pain. So that may be where that's coming, uh, why, why people are reporting that. And of course, long-term pain makes you feel very low and very uh, quite understandably so. But there are other pathways. We've now got much more access to social prescribing. Um, there's a fantastic online service that uh, called Live Well With Pain, which I'd recommend people looking up. It's got a lot of resources there for patients as well as for doctors. Um, really helpful ways of thinking about your pain. As Kirsty was saying, she had to come to terms with her pain and she had to learn how to live with her pain. Um, and uh, it'll be different for different people depending on their circumstances, just as, as Kirsty said. Chris, good morning. In a community pain service, what, what routes, what advice can you give people? I think, um, firstly, I think what, what Kirsty said before resonates really deeply i think with with um certainly with me and, and probably my colleagues but most importantly the people that we uh, we see in our pain service i think um there are th there's a number of things that people can um can do i think what, what we're really starting to understand with pain is that there are many many things that matter when it comes down to pain i think the likes of medication it can have a role but we know that um, we know that things that they can do themselves have a really important role and, and being in charge of that, understanding pain in a really good way, understanding the things that help your pain individually can help um, can help significantly. I think also the, the, um, the types of things that we are recommending from evidence now is starting to catch up with what people have said for a long time, particularly um, things like movement-based strategies, mindful strategies, um, uh, understanding nutrition well, understanding um, the kind of things that flare our pain and the, that uh, kind of soothe our pain. Those are the kind of things that are very, very individual 
And um, so people will, um, people, I think in, in a pain service, we start to encourage people to try and uh, to try and look at those things individually, as well as perhaps some of the medicalized things that may help. And and in terms of getting access, and I, I believe there isn't at the moment perhaps the longest wait for, for your clinic, but people have reported that they can't get to these pain clinics. They can't get in. Yeah, I think it's very individual. And I think um, we're starting to get better at um, at community-based pain services. And there's, there's, you know, there's a level of expertise that we have in the community for this. Um, and so I think it is very individual. Commissioning around pain services is changing a little bit. Um, you know, we're understanding some of the um, some of the evidence that we have, have accrued over time, particularly through NICE. And, and um, I'm, so, ju- I'm just, sorry. I was just going to say, no, I'm sorry to cut across you, but just because of time, you know, we've got lots of messages coming in about how people are living. Uh, one woman's written in saying, isolated, tearful, ashamed, years of being told to take paracetamol and see a physio. Thank you, Kirsty, for saying that. Is there anything you could say now to somebody listening, Chris, who's in pain, it's chronic, um, to, to just help them perhaps feel like there is a way forward? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, first of all, understand pain and there's lots of resources to do that. I think um, find people around you who will help. Um, having a team around you is really important and primary care play a role in this. Um, also peer led um, support can play a role in this. And there's lots of good resources about, um, you know, how to, how to look at pain. And again, I can share some resources offline from that. Um, but there's lots of good resources around. I think um, the NHS definitely plays a role in this um, and it's accessing services that will support people in a multi-professional way, I, mean, I think is, is going to be key. Camilla, you mentioned there this resource, Live Well With Pain. We'll, we'll share yes. what we can on the, the Today website uh, and also the longer version of our interview with Kirsty, I should say, will also be available on, on BBC Sounds for those who want to hear more detail. But is there anything else you could say? Because people listening right yes. now are really yes. you know, in, in, in trouble with this. I really don't want patients to feel that they're alone in this um, and they can at least come and talk to their GP or other members of the primary healthcare team about how they're feeling because I think that's just uh, that's the first step uh, along the path. I just have to connect it to the fact that we've got GPs who are taking action at the moment and so fewer GPs around to see and people have also been saying they haven't been able to get in easily. Well GP surgeries are open they're not taking that sort of action. No 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 but I mean it's been hard anyway to see a GP. It is hard. I just I just want to reflect that reality and people when they're in pain feel sometimes that they they don't have the energy. Well, um, please uh, take that last bit of energy you've got and contact your GP is what I would say, because, yes, we are under a lot of pressure, but we want to help our patients. That's what we've been trained to do. And that's what we will do. Um, And yeah, I hope you get in. There you go, Dr. Camilla Hawthorne, Dr. Chris Barker. Thank Thank you.